Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience, contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome to Pods of the Multiverse. We are an unofficial D&D podcast where four of us play D&D in some of our favorite settings. Thank you so much for joining us here in our third season. My name is Jeppy, and I will be playing the world of Icewind Dale and its inhabitants. Joining me are three of my favorite people playing our main characters for this season. I'm Scala. I'm playing Periwinkle Wuggins, uh, Halfling Bard, and... Apropos of nothing, Jeppy, even calling me one of your favorite people, the fuck you stands. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, man. And it's not the first, I don't think. Oh, God. Uh, uh, I'm Andy. I play Everett, the reborn ranger, a man witnessing the possible events of his past life through a series of real fucked up dreams. Mm. And I'm Jimmy. I play Jetsam Mangrove, otherwise known as Jib. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> Official lore in the intro. That's right. And uh, Jib is sorry. Just sorry in general for everything. <laughs> you know, for a fighter, you really fall on your sword quite a bit. Thank you. Please and thank you. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, as always, thank you so much. And please uh, review and engage with us on our Discord, Twitter. Check out our Patreon. With all that out of the way, we'll get into our third episode. All right. We last left our heroes staring down a large wall made of ice on the side of the Carowin Mountains on their trek to Tourmaline. Back in Caer Deneval, our party rooted out a band of Black Sword cultists by killing their leader, Cardoth. From their investigation in a recent string of murders around the failed Barash fishing camp in Caer Deneval, they were able to obtain a nugget of Wraithesite and tie it to this group of cultists. Soon after, they were informed that this Wraithesite was from the Crimson Glimmer Mines, and Kessa, their handler, sent them towards Tourmaline, just beyond the Carowin Mountains. Shortly after, our three heroes found themselves in the depths of a blizzard, facing a barren, merciless tundra, only to meet the mountain and have to scale its unforgiving walls in the hopes that Tourmaline may lie just beyond. So, the three of you sit facing this wide, large ice wall. It is very clear you're going to have to scale it. Can't go around it. I will invite you to make a nature check. What time of day is it? Because uh, you said it would take like about a day to get to this point? It's always felt dark out because of the gray bleakness and it's the north. Sort of like twilighty, right? But like, yeah, it's twilighty. If your internal compass is telling you anything, it is nighttime for sure. It is probably not like late for a college kid who parties all night, but it's pretty late. It's probably like 8.30, maybe 9, something like that. Is it night? It's night, but it's felt like night all day because you've been up north and in a blizzard. But it's not darker than it was earlier. Late for a 63-year-old halfling, you would say. <laughs> oh, for a 63-year-old halfling, it's time to uh, go to the parlor room for one last little TV show and uh, fall asleep <laughs> on your recliner, as Wink do. That's a five nature, so whatever additional information I might know, I don't. I got a 12. I got a 18. Awesome. So, Everett, you notice that this wall is sprawling in all directions. You could go ahead and start to make your way around the length of the mountain if you'd want to, but... You can see enough off into the distance curling around past your point of view that you'd guess it would be a waste of time to walk around this mountain, knowing that, like, probably on all ends, at some point you're going to have to scale it. Or you are walk around the entire mountain and add a lot of time to your trip. What you also notice, however, is that the ice itself seems to be somewhat cracking. And you know that when you go to scale this wall, you may want to tell your party it would behoove the three of you to not climb in a single file interesting i will relay that I, I i will relay that to the party finally kind enough to relay to them critical information about their survival this trek has been cursed the snow the wind the land itself but from what i can see i am afraid that this in front of us is our only way forward now do you know anything about the surrounding geography? If there's any sort of commerce between these towns, there's likely some sort of route through these mountains. Andy, roll history. Okay. With advantage. Hmm, interesting. <coughs> that is a 19. Oh, okay, cool. Thought it was the bad other though. dice was a nat 1. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing I gave you that advantage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait, we're exhausted. That's a flat roll. Oh. Oh, yeah. No, you're right. You're absolutely right. You want me to just roll again? Uh, Scala, attorney at rules law. Mm. No, 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 no. They make no. their appearance when they must. Yeah. I will grant you another roll as opposed to having you keep the one. You got it. 
Okay, that is a 12. Okay, cool. Yeah, on a 12, you remember because you skipped the pleasantries with Kessa and just looked at her maps immediately. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So you remember distinctly that the next closest town in this compass direction and general area from Caradineval is Tourmaline. They are, though separated by a giant mountain and long trek, they are the nearest two towns to one another. If you were to have gone south, you'd find a different town closer, but again, that is not even remotely in the direction you're heading, so you'd be able to comfortably relay to Wink that this is it. I mean, you can't account for random people that live in this wasteland, but in terms of commerce, none. Got it. I recall seeing several maps on Kessa's desk. It would seem that it would take many more days to go another route. And this town, Tourmaline, is it landlocked? Andy, I'm not going to make you re-roll. It was very much landlocked. Okay. I believe so. Mm. I mean, I'm willing to spend the extra time if it means a safer journey. Real quick point of order for anyone that's listening and reads the Icewind Dale book. It is not technically landlocked, but it's on a river that does not even come close to where you're at. So It's landlocked for the purposes of your travel. In other words, don't at Jeppy. <laughs> don't at me one Twitter follower. <laughs> hey, we have 299 Twitter followers. We're getting up there. We're so close. 298 times the risk. I'm that wrong. <laughs> Hopefully by the time we release this episode, we'll have more. Would hope so. Yeah, yeah. I think at this time I'll invite you all to make a perception check. Nope. Oh, this is all with disadvantage. Oh, with, with disadvantage. Well, the first roll was a one. <laughs> Doesn't matter. The second roll. <laughs> yeah. That's going to be a 16 for me. I got a five. A five? It's better than a one. I got a total of two. <laughs> On this slow ass race, you still beat Jimmy. If it was with advantage, it would have been a six. <laughs> Very nice. Oh my that, God. You hate to give that up. You hate to give up six. It's really tough to let go. Everett, because you already had a good survey of the land before, you'll be able to put two and two together as you start to see familiar eyes speckling in the distance. You still don't know what they are. I mean, you know it probably doesn't bode well, but you see them yeah. kind of pockmarking in all directions. And what you can kind of glean from that and your surveying earlier is that while it may feel very risky to climb this wall, the trek will be long the other route, and you can't account for what will come after you from the tundra itself. Cool, cool, cool. As I ponder this for a moment, I sort of take one hand to my temple and say, The road, whatever we may find of one, might fare better, but these elements, they will follow us. I have a feeling of this. Perhaps a rest instead. Something to gain some strength. Well, I don't think it'd be a terrible idea to set camp here. Figure out what we're gonna do next in the morning. I am somewhat familiar with this sort of cold. Perhaps I will be able to keep a watch. So Andy, where it concerns like night watches, where normally adventurers may take shifts because of your, let's call it situation, what's that like? Also Jib, I mean, Jib just needs four hours. He can't do like a night watch during those four hours, but otherwise okay. don't need a full night of sleep. And likewise with Everett, right? Four hours of inertness? Or? I think I remain conscious, but I can't act. The exact wording is four, four hours, inactive, motionless, in which you retain consciousness. So Okay. Over the course of an eight-hour rest, it could be split right. up. You know, evenly yeah. between the two four-hour resters. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'll go ahead and say then at that point, we'll go ahead and do two rest watches. Wink can go ahead and tuck on in for the night. Big long day, lots of song singing, probably a good time to rest. Jib, while you're doing your watch, I will allow Everett to grant you the help action because they are mm. in a semi-conscious state sure. and you're all at disadvantage. Okay. Sort of keeping one eye open. Got it. Yeah, exactly. So okay. I'll allow a help action to you. But I will not allow the same when you do your check, Everett. All right. So you can basically roll flat if you want. Yeah, I guess we will go about setting up a camp. Bootyful. Such that it is. You want to grant them a bardic inspiration before bed? Nice little bedtime song? <laughs> They're going to need it. It only lasts 10 minutes. I don't know how you... Shit. I think Jeppy just really wants to hear Wink sing more songs. <laughs> you know, um, that was less about DM kindness and more about I really want to hear another song. But... I'm not going to force these things. These songs need to come when Wink wants them to. That's a big rule in this house. Wink's hands are very cold. <laughs> They're keeping their gloves on. Not great for strumming the banjo. Maybe once they get back inside. Not banjo time. Uh, and there's also probably some snow, you know, on the strings that they're going to have to shake out. Yeah. Banjo-Kazooie? More like Banjo-Kafooie. Mm-hmm. 
A plus. Great joke. Never again. Don't worry. <laughs> Never again. Wow. All right. Who's doing our first watch? Hey, you miss 100% of the bad jokes you don't make. Yeah. I also miss all the ones that I do. <laughs> I don't mind taking the first watch. Very well. All right. And Everett will go sit against, if there's a high spot on a snowbank that's up against the wall. So he's got his back to the wall looking out at the surroundings as he begins his deathless rest. Yeah, while I'm getting ready for my watch here, I'm going to start a fire, a little campfire with my explorer's pack, gather whatever stuff I can find and try to get a fire going here. Cool. All right, go ahead and give me a flat roll. What were you saying? That was it. It felt like you were in the middle of a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> Just say you can roll perception. <laughs> now you have to keep the sneeze. Um, Jesus Christ. So you... <laughs> I can cut out however much we need. None. Keep it. All. Okay, I will allow either a survival or a perception roll for your night watch as you start to try and assemble a fire and keep warm. Excellent. I'm going to make this perception because I'm slightly less bad at that. But I'm still pretty bad at it. That's an eight. Oh, no. All right. (laughs) On an eight, you notice three of the eyes. They seemed a lot smaller in the distance. And three of them kind of lurch forward and they get much larger. And they've stopped. But you seem to notice that whatever's out there is coming closer. Uh Uh-oh. They came forward very quickly. Or they came forward over the course of my watch. You notice, like, over the course of your watch, maybe you tend to the fire, maybe you get lost in thought, but almost like how when you have, like, a cat at home and you hide behind a wall and then you come back out and the cat's just a little bit closer because it's trying to sneak up yes. on you. Every time you look, the eyes are just a little bit closer looking. All right. But towards the end of your watch, you notice that they don't keep doing that. They kind of stay where they are. Okay. It's really hard to tell if there's ill intent or not. That's what I did notice. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you noticed on an eight- yeah. <laughs> on a 20, who knows? Malevolent forces would have come back and Satan himself would have risen from the depths of the earth. But on an 8, just some eyeballs. And your watch goes by forebodingly, but peacefully nonetheless. All right. Let's see how we do on Everett with disadvantage. I'm going to go retrieve Everett from where he is. What did you see, Jib? Well, uh, those weird eyes got a little closer. Something watching us through the haze. Indeed. This is a cursed place. You should try and rest now. All right, I'm going to start my trance. My eyes go blank. Oh, so cool. Here I go. (laughs) That is going to be a 14 with disadvantage. It was a very low DC of 12. So you passed it. And though you notice the eyes linger and you actually do notice more coming closer, that's it. They just kind of stay there in a semicircle around your camp. They just sit and wait to see what you all do. I think if you were to count it, it would probably be 12, maybe more eyes circling around you. They just stay there. And then before long, you notice that what little of sunlight reaches this northern pocket of the world begins to creep over the horizon. Nothing's there. The eyes fold out of view. Can I roll something to try and see if this is magic? What is really at work here? Yeah, you can roll Arcana. Cool. Unfortunately, with disadvantage. Uh, I'm curious. That's an 11. On an 11, the best you can tell in your coming out of inertness state and your hyper-aware state looking at these eyes, you don't sense magic at all. Mm. You feel like it's probably something nature-bound. You know, it's the middle of the night. Stress is high in so much as ever it can have stress. That's what you can surmise. I actually also do want to say, Andy, if you could roll me a d6 as you make that watch as well. Oh, shit. From time to time while Everett is watching out these eyes staring back at him, Every once in a while, he'll wince and a shadow will be cast over his eyes from beneath his mask as I roll a one. One. Awesome. On a one, maybe you see it in the stars or maybe it is in those moments where your eyes close for just a while during that watch, but you don't hear anything. You recall recently hearing the voice of a young girl. This time you hear no voices, but burning into your vision you see flashes of imagery. And that imagery looks like someone hanging on a group of sticks, speared into the icy ground, rocks abounding. You hear nothing, but you see this person, this abstract shape of a human. Clearly they're screaming, you hear no sound. And in front of you, right at the front of your vision, is an arm holding a very large, resplendent blue and white feather. And then the flash is gone. What the fuck is that? (laughs) Wowie, wow, wow. 
You said, like, speared into the ground. You mean, like, impaled? Like, Yeah, Andy, did your character fuck with Dracula? Did you fuck with Dracula? No, no. It's a great... <laughs> I probably should have used different terminology, but basically you'd know them as, like, spikes in the ground. Okay. It's a huge wooden board speared into the ground as if it's a spike. Similar to, but not a crucifix, basically. Like, you see a person on a wooden spike screaming. You can't make out anything about that person. And again, in front of you, this large white and blue feather. Wow. I reel out of that vision. <sighs> they, they grow stronger. Very well. Morning creeps over, and wink, big old stretch, and you're up and at it. Ah, morning. How are we all feeling? Better such that it is. Though the night went by peacefully, the wall still looms. You all look up at this daunting wall as you consider how you're feeling. Let me explain how this is going to work. You are all free to approach this how you want. I gave Andy the information of it might be best not to go single file. So I'm just going to preface that. You will all scale this wall. Every time you do so, you will make a check. You have the option to do survival, athletics, acrobatics. Whether you pass or fail... You will then have to make an attack roll against the ice wall. Mm. On a pass, you will then roll damage on this ice wall to see how much of it gives way. With a weapon? Uh, yes. Can we use equipment that we think would be helpful? Describe to me what you're going to do, and I'll tell you if it works, how it may impact this mechanically. Sure. Anyone got pittons? Oh my god. Pittons. I do not. They don't come in an entertainer's pack. I have two costumes. <laughs> <laughs> You decide to entertain the wall until it melts. <laughs> Let's see. Monster hunters. Going around is still an option. Just crowbar, hammer, manacles. <laughs> I have fucking manacles. <laughs> Let's see if as a folk hero I start with anything interesting. I would say try to find whatever would roll the lowest damage. So, like, yeah. I don't know mechanically if a crowbar rolls damage, mm. but... It doesn't. Okay, I could make an argument that, like, maybe a crowbar is a weaker weapon, and instead of rolling a 1d whatever, you roll a 1d4. I okay. would treat yeah, it yeah, as yeah. a club, which is a d4 anyway. I have daggers. Unless you choose to go single file. Each of you have a discrete chunk of wall that you will work up, so the damage that you do will be to your side of the wall only, should you stay separate. Ah, uh, a shovel and a pot. Ah. Uh. <laughs> you just whack the wall with a pot to try and climb it. <laughs> no, I have daggers, too. <laughs> okay, great, great. Bard starts with some daggers. Beautiful. Everyone's got a dagger. Everyone has a dagger? I don't have a dagger. I have a club. Jim's gonna scale this sheet of ice with a club. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> Not sure how that works, but yeah. Wacky. We should spread out and go slow. I sort of look at Jim, his physical form. Perhaps you first. Well, sure. I've uh, climbed plenty of rocks before. Never ice, but... How different can it be? So I'm going to roll acrobatics, and then an attack roll against the wall? Yeah, whether you fail or pass. Gotcha. Okay. That's a dirty 20. Nice. Pass. Thank you. You are welcome. I should hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that cruel. Okay. What am I doing with this club? Why am I... You roll your attack roll to see if you'll strike deep enough to crack the foundation. Otherwise, you won't strike super deep enough to do extreme damage to the wall, but enough to make your way up. So you can try to roll an attack roll lower than the AC of this thing to avoid doing damage to it. I get it. All right. So you're hoping for a high roll on the DC check, and then a low roll on attack roll, and if not, a low roll on your damage. Finally, we've, Jimmy, this we've is... found a skill game that, that caters to Jimmy <laughs> Oh dice. my god. Oh my god. This is Jeffy great. built this for Jimmy. <laughs> Perfect. Aww. Also, this is giving me huge guy's cliff energy, and I really like that. Sweet. All right, All right Jim, let's, let's see how the Jimmy dice... There goes an attack roll with Watch, the Watch, net club. 20. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's an 18. <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> because I think what you um, fail to understand about the Jimmy dice is that it's always the worst outcome. Not it, yeah, it's, it knows. Yeah, it's not always low. <laughs> exactly. All right, go ahead and roll damage on okay. the wall. All right. It's two bludgeoning damage against this ice. Beautiful. That's great news. Mm. Who would like to go second on the wall? Can we sort of see if he's being successful or not? Yeah, it's, he's only made his first like kind of couple of little... The listeners can't see your hand motions. That doesn't really convey what he's doing. He's only made his first couple <laughs> jimmy shimmies up the wall. Jimmy shimmies, yeah. How high in feet would you say a couple jimmy shimmies is? He's probably between 20 to 35-ish feet up. Wow. It's misty and it's windy, but you can still see him from the ground. Those are pretty sizable jimmy shimmies. Yeah, it's a pretty sizable uh, melt. Yeah, okay. Wink, mechanically, I'm not going to make you do more than the others. Let's just assume you do more shimmies to make the same distance in one roll. Fair enough. All right, let's do it. I'll do acrobatics. See how this goes. 
Mm, that's an eight. It's a fail. Yeah, I figured. You struggle, you're shimmying up, and you're just like finding it really hard to hoist yourself. Let's see how true you strike into this wall. Okay, a dagger is a finesse weapon, so I can choose to roll it with my strength <laughs> modifier. That's true. Which I will do. <laughs> Got him. That's a 16 total. Ew, you hate to see that. Mm-hmm, I do. It strikes true. Okay. Two points of piercing. It's beautiful. All right, Everett. Sorry, if I could get a little more clarification. If they failed, are they basically still on the ground? They're just struggling somewhere between zero and 35 feet-ish. <laughs> they're, they're just having a time. Okay, so they're somewhere in the middle. Got it. Cool. Everett takes out his daggers, which are actually Chris's. They're the sort of wavy bladed daggers. It's all gravy. And is going to roll survival, and that is a 22. Yeah, pass. And he is going to use also strength, and this attack he's going to make... I can roll low sometimes. That's a nine. Hits. Just kidding. You're good. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if a giant wall of ice had an AC eight, but... No, I, I, it, I will say it is, it is low, but I didn't want to be extremely cruel. You miss. You hit the wall just enough to make progress. And you notice no sizable new cracks forming on this wall in front of you as you look down and see a sizable distance from you in the ground. I look back to Wink below Jib and I. I'm now Wink... We have a long way to go. Yeah, I'll get there. I ain't got fancy knives like you do. What a shit. And that's why that's not bardic inspiration. <laughs> Come on, you can do better. <laughs> well, no. <laughs> anyway, let's uh, keep the same order going. Jib, you're up again. All right, it's acrobatics again. And this time it's a 19. Jib's just swimming up this wall. Almost as if it's the ocean itself, because it's very blue looking. This icy wall that's opens peculiar. itself to you as you make more progress. And as you make more progress, smashing your club into the wall. Let's see how that goes. <laughs> oh, man. I've never rolled this many double-digit rolls in a row. It's going to be a 21 to hit. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it hits, Jimmy. <laughs> it hits the unmoving wall. All right. And that is four bludgeoning damage. Okay, great. All right. We don't have to change up our skills, right? Not for this, no. All right. I'm going to stick to what I'm best at then. Yep, totally. Seven. Huh. Oh, no. Okay. You know the outcome. Yes, I do. Does a 10 hit? It does not. Great job. Okay, cool. Uh, is there anything I can do now? No. No, <laughs> it's really. fine. Three and a two were my rolls. We'll get there. We'll get the one out of the system, and then it can only go up from there. It's not how dice work, in my experience. <laughs> in your experience. <laughs> All right, Everett. All right. Guess that's me. My survival check is a 14. Wow. Fail. That's sad. Struggling. Maybe because Karma has pointed her finger at you for not chiding, but not inspiring Wink. You are also struggling on this next leg of the wall, but making those dagger chips. Let's see how those go. Look, e e Everett's not in it to make friends, okay? Oh, yeah, no. Everett, Everett doesn't thrive, and so, like, this is not what Everett thrives at. No. That's fine. Let's see here. With the daggers... Wow, that's a two on this dice. Good job. For a total of eight. That does not hit. Great job. Are you all right down there, friend? <laughs> you love to hear that. Yes. I see what you did to there, Jim. <laughs> awesome. Jib just running up this wall, or as Jib would put it, swimming. Go ahead and go after it again. All right. Oh, that's an at one. <laughs> does that pass? It's a total of six. Ladies, gentlemen, people of all types and sizes, Jimmy Dice are back. Second nat one of the night. It's a fail. Go ahead and roll your attack. Sure. Oh, well, that. Now that's a dirty 20. That's not what you want. <laughs> Go oh, ahead and no. roll damage. <laughs> see, see oh, oh Jim's going to take a tumble. And, Jeppy, for you and anyone listening, Gentles All is a fine, formal, non-specific introduction. Gentles All is way better. Never heard it before, actually. It's in Shakespeare, I think. Is it? Oh, love that. Types and sizes. That's, you know. <laughs> Gentles All is going to be part of the lexicon from now on. It's much, much better. Did you mean it as races? Like, what, what were you... It was my <laughs> attempt at, like, using the vernacular, ladies and gentlemen, and then trying to be inclusive and just not doing a great job. Uh, I see. Anyway, that's two bludgeoning damage as I'm smashing this. It's technically a belaying pin from the sailor background. 
It's the thing you wrap rope around. Oh, Beautiful. So it's Beautiful. so good. Beautiful. Jim's over here trying to fucking Breath of the Wild glitch his way up this mountain. Yeah. <laughs> just doing up fucking attack spins that you just start going up. Yeah, and I missed the timing on that one. <laughs> Love it. Uh, wink. Okay. Let's see if my fortune improves. It certainly does. That's a natural 20. Nice. Passive. A total of 25 acrobatics. Pass. Beautiful. And let us see if we do any damage to this wall. With a 7, I believe, probably not. The wall is not looking too hurt. Splendid. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Love that. And here comes Everett. The survival check. That is also a nat 20. Cool. Awesome. Total of 28. (laughs) Here's the attack roll. That is going to be a 16. That hits. Yeah. Okay. Let me find a d4 here. As I drive this wavy blade. That's four piercing. I don't like that look that Jeffy just gave me. <laughs> Those are not the kind of numbers you want to be doing to this wall, good friend. <laughs> <laughs> that wall looks pissed that you did that. We're back to Jib. Right. Just a little bit ahead of Everett. You've been struggling, but Everett's starting to make pace on you. It's not a race, but if it were, you'd want to maybe hoof it. Feels like a race. Can you see the top from there, Jib? I don't know. Can I? Perfectly great question to ask as some of you start to really make headway here. As you're making your way up, the winds are getting a little bit more rough, starting to see lots of snow come in, and it's a film of white all around you. You definitely cannot see the top from here, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you haven't maybe hit the halfway point. It's just that the conditions here make it hard to see too far in front of you. I don't see much of anything up here. All right. Go ahead and roll. (laughs) All right. Here's an acrobatics check. These are getting lower and lower. Well, not lower than a one. That's a 14. It fails. Yes, it does. It fails. It just, it just fails. I'm sorry. Okay, well, this misses, though. This is a five to hit. It misses. Cool. All right, let's do some more half-lingnastics. Half-nastics? Half-nastics. Maybe. Oh, jeez. All right, we're hitting everywhere on the sub-10. Oh, no. Oh, It's a uh, four, so a nine total. It's a fail. Yep. And the attack roll is a four to hit. Does not. Wink is just taking their time, going very slowly and carefully, making sure not to damage this wall. I got the numbers in front of me, and Wink's wall is looking the best. Wink's done a great job making that wall look real nice. If only in... In small increments. Yes. (laughs) Yeah, small. (laughs) It'll take them twice as many rolls, but... They'll get there. Yeah. Everett. Okay. How you doing? Uh, Here we go. Survival. That's a 25. Lovely. You pass. With the dagger. Ah, oh, shit. That's gonna hit. That is a 17. Yeah, it hits. Yikes! That's another four piercing damage. Uh-oh. Oh, God. Veins of cracks going up and down both directions. I do not like this. Is it possible for Everett to move laterally at some point? I'll explain it this way. This is the way I'll explain it. There are columns of ice discreetly from one another. Think of it as like this section is ice and the rest is kind of like rock that I can't really chip into. You're each in your own lanes. So if Everett or any of you move laterally, you're still in your own lane, which shares a health pool, basically. Okay. Let me put it this way. Can I look down to see Wink? Wink has just gotten out of view. Can I see Jib above me? You can see Jib. Jib is now below you. Jib waves as you look down. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, How far below me? Hard to tell because the conditions, maybe 30 feet. I can see him, though. Okay. And I can tell the ice on my track is not looking great. Give me a nature or perception check to try and see how Jib's part of the wall looks. I wasn't going to jump to Jib's. I'm going to look over to Wink's, and I am going to roll with my perception check a 19. Okay. Because it's left, middle, right, Jib, Wink, you... Mm-hmm. Hard to see jibs for sure, even on a 19, but like best you can tell, it looks to be about equally as damaged as yours. Winks looks significantly better. Oh my god, and we're on the side of a fucking mountain. I don't <laughs> yell. Shit. <laughs> oh god. So how much physical space is between these discrete ice sheets? I'm going to answer that directly, and then I'm going to explain something that I think Andy is ruminating over mechanically. 
how I would allow what I think Andy wants to do. Oh, to I'm going to try and fucking. I jump know what this, you're going to try and do. <laughs> it's not insignificant. It's somewhere between ten to twenty feet between these discrete sheets of ice. So I'm going to make you roll acrobatics, and you will have to sacrifice a pass because you will vertically fall. You, you won't be able to just clean jump left or right. You're going to have to take some vertical fall before you can latch onto Wink's part of the wall. You're going to have to make an acrobatics check. Maybe most importantly, in my opinion, is you will sacrifice paths. Yeah, but I don't want this fucking ice to break and fall a hundred fucking however many feet. Are there any unoccupied ice sheets that he could potentially jump to? Oh, I am on the end. Is there one on the other side of me? Open player slots. Yeah, um, you got to find one of your friends to put a quarter into the arcade and press start and then make... No. <laughs> yeah, there is There is one on each side of you and Jib that each of you could burn through, but again, the same thing is going to apply here. I'm going to risk it. Okay. I look to the side. Oh, and you're going to have to also roll attack once you go. I figured that, but I seriously do not want to fucking fall. If I'm, like, close to this damage threshold, fuck no. You also haven't figured out how falling works yet, but okay. We'll come to that fucking burning bridge when we get to it. We don't want to find out how falling works. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Can you all imagine what this would have been like with the exhaustion? Bad. <laughs> Very bad. I'm going to roll that acrobatics check. Here I go. Boom. <sighs> uh, I'm going to burn a knowledge of the past. <laughs> remember no, that one time I jumped a wall on a mountain. Let me remember that. Because that was only a 13 total. <laughs> yeah, I'm literally like mid-jump and just this flash of like, what am I doing? Um, okay, that's a total of an 18. While jumping, Everett remembers maybe a friend of his that once talked about their nice kitten pittens and how they helped them on the mountain <laughs> steals himself and lands true on the other side of the ice while having unfortunately lost some vertical distance up this trek. Go ahead and roll damage. And because your roll was so good, I'm going to have you roll this attack with advantage. Advantage? <laughs> <laughs> The one time you don't want it. A tabaxi. I remember a tabaxi. Strange. Go ahead and reset the health pool of this wall. Okay, well that's uh, 12. 12 just hits. Fuck! Hey, at least it's a fresh wall, right? <laughs> that's a one. Total of three. Beautiful. All right, Jib. Well, that seemed pretty risky. I'm going to keep climbing this section of wall. <laughs> Jib immediately breaks his wall. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. We'll see what happens here. It's <laughs> This is an insane thing. No, yeah. No, this is a 24. Nice. It passes. So you're feeling really good about your trek. You can't see the top because the conditions are so rough, but you're feeling good. The morale is high. Yeah, I am feeling good. And then you strike into the wall and see what happens to that morale. And that is a 7 to hit. Nice. Beautiful. You definitely just boop enough into that wall to avoid any cracks and crumbling in this icy wall. Boop. Beautiful. Wink. All right. Slow and steady. 24 acrobatics. Beautiful. Passes. This looks like I might be able to go a bit faster here. As you start to scale the wall, you see Everett really trying to be a badass. All right. What happened? It's a 17 to hit. Indeed it does. Yep. It's going to be three pieces. Great. Okay. Everett. (sighs) Okay. That is a 19 plus 8. The survival. Pass. And that is a 9 for the attack. Miss. Nice. Am I catching up with Jib? You are catching up to him now, but he is far to your left. Got it. And in these conditions, hard to see. But that's more of a horizontal distance than it is a vertical. Cool. Back to Jib. All right. 22. Pass. Go ahead and roll the damage. Excellent. 13. It hits. 13 hits. All right. Uh Uh-oh. That's three bludgeoning damage. All right. You're seeing less and less safe places to chip into this wall, but you do see what looks to be the end of this right in sight. I can see the top. Nice. Beautiful. Very good. We are behind you. What's that? I can't hear you all the way down here. I said I could see the top. It echoes. What does stressed Jib sound like? (laughs) Does it exist? Anyway, wink. What? Let's keep having at it. Okay, and 18 acrobatics? Indeed. Beautiful. Okay. And for our attack roll, 21. That'll hit. Oh, yeah. All day. And a maximum of four points of piercing. Oh, no. 
Alright. You look around, hard to see Everett's wall, but you notice your wall not looking too much better than Jib's, but a little bit better than Jib's as you continue to make your trek. Okay. Everett. Here we go. The survival roll is a 14. Just fails. I didn't think so. Fuck. Okay. Attack roll. Eee. That is a 11. Misses. Just misses. Oh, okay. So for those paying attention, you found the AC. Congratulations. <sighs> Fuck this cursed fucking place. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's see if I can get on top here. Here it is. 14. Just fails. Had you passed, there would be no attack roll. But unfortunately, I need you to roll attack. Here we go. All right. That's an 18 to hit. Beautiful. Oh, God. I still just get excited. I get excited on good attack rolls. Oh, wait, no, that's bad news. You fucking yeah, hit. That's, that's, that's really right. bad news, yes. Jimmy. That's, that's really the attack bad. attack roll. That's right. Shit. I'm going to roll. Here we go. I built this mechanic, and I forgot how it worked, because I was, like, excited for you. It's just how excited we get when Jim rolls good. Yeah, exactly. Two bludgeoning damage. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jib, you noticed that any wrong movement, and this wall is gone. Ooh. Yikes. <laughs> Yikes indeed, my friend. Wink. Okay. How far down from the rest of them am I? You cannot see Jib at all. If you look up and to the right of you, you can make out movement. But it's, like, hard to tell. And it's as, as high up as you can see, which in this weather, no more than 40 feet. Good to know. Skill check's a nine. It's unfortunately a fail. Slow and steady. Yep. Attack rolls a 20. Ah. Unfortunately a hit. Damage. Maximum four piercing. Ooh. You wink. Realize that any wrong movements in this wall will give way. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because you're in this predicament, looking at the wall that Everett left behind, it doesn't look great, but it looks significantly better than yours. Mm-hmm. Okay. But moving over there will lose me some distance, right? That mechanic will still apply. Yeah. No. Okay. Um, and unfortunately, the other side of you is Jib's wall, which is as, in as state of a disrepair right. as yours. Oh. Uh oh. I wonder what happens if I fall. Can I make a perception check? Yeah, feel free. Yeah. What are you looking for? <coughs> either Wink or Jib, if I can see either of them. Cool. Um, perception, that's a 21. Cool. On a 21, you can see Wink, a uh, tiny pit underneath you, far to the left. Let me ask this. Did I hear Jib say I'm almost to the top? Faintly, yeah. You can hear that. It sounded like it was one skill check away above you. Put it that way. Jib. Jib, can you hear me? Can I? Barely. What was that? Do you have a rope? Yeah, I only have 100 feet, though. Do you want hemp in or silk? <laughs> like he's going to the store on half and half for 2%. <laughs> I can also entwine them. If that Whatever would... you can throw down. Oh, okay. You said you were an expert. Cast it wide, Jib. All right. Mechanically, that's going to be fucking difficult. You're what? all very far apart from each other. <laughs> What if I fall? Fucking, if one of us could have thought of this before we started this goddamn thing. <laughs> yeah, had you done this on the ground, I would have allowed it. It's going to be really hard. All right, seeing the ice breaking around on the other paths, I'm going to try and forge ahead and just get to the top. Okay, that is a 22 survival. Brilliant, you pass and you see up ahead. The end is right there. Right there. Recollecting where Jib's voice was coming from, you know you're at the same place where Jib is. You can see the end. Go ahead and roll an attack. Fuck! These motherfucking nat 20s. God damn it. Oh, no. Go ahead and roll 2d4. Oopsie. See, everybody was praising that this skill game is great for Jib, but this skill game is terrible for my goddamn loaded dice. (laughs) <laughs> that is a uh, four bludgeoning damage total. Two one. Beautiful. All right, cool. Your wall is still looking relatively intact. Relatively. So we go back to Jib, the end in sight. All right. One way or the other, the end is in sight. <laughs> <laughs> this, yeah, this certainly is the end of Jib. Eight. <laughs> it's a fail. And because it's a fail, you have to roll your attack roll. Fourteen. Damn it! (laughs) You don't need to roll your dice because your wall has one HP left. I'm going to roll it anyway. Okay. (laughs) What is it? It's two bludgeoning damage. Okay. All right. I will describe what happens, but I'm going to give you a choice mechanically of what you want to do here. I want to not fall. (laughs) That's not an option. That is not an option. Jib, you chip into this wall and 
at first silence and then suddenly rumbling, cracks sprawling out all around you, and then a full sheet of this wall just crumbles and you have to quickly take your weapon from it as you begin. Plummet, I am going to not require you to make any roll or save. What is going to happen is just a consequence of this. Unless you want to roll, and if you fail, the consequence gets worse. Otherwise, your consequence is you are going to lose one pass worth of vertical distance and are going to take an amount of damage that I will roll. I will invite you that if you want to make an acrobatics check, knowing that if you fail, that consequence will be worse, you may do so. Otherwise, I will grant you that you are able to get your weapon in at some point during your fall. We can also just play it flat, and I'll have you make a deck save on this fall. A better at acrobatics checks. That's all right. I'll make a deck save. Okay. Aren't fighters proficient in deck saves? No, strength and constitution, I thought. Yeah. That's what I have here. Who the fuck gets strength and dex? I think it's you. I think it's Rangers. Barbarian? No, I think it's Barbarian, actually. No, Barbarian is Strength and Con. Oh, no, it is me. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my own goddamn character sheet. Never mind. So after all that, what were my options? I can make a deck save or do what? At this point, I'm going to have you make a deck save. 15. All right. You take half of 10 for five bludgeoning damage as you fall and lose some distance and drive your weapon into this next layer of ice and you just dislocate your shoulder so you just smash into this wall and regain your composure. Ow. The wall is a fresh sheet. You cannot tell if it is as strong as the sheet before it, but what you see is no cracks in front of you. And you have lost one check worth of progress. Twink! Huh? Onwards and upwards. Let's see what happens. Does a 16 pass. The uh, acrobatics DC. It does. Splendid. I shall make some progress, and we shall see if all of this will be immediately undone. <laughs> I appreciate your realistic view. <laughs> Look, Wink's been around the block. Wink knows how to roll with the punches. How does Rink know how to roll this attack, though? Entirely average, which I believe is a hit. Twelve. Twelve is just a hit. Mm -hmm. And you may roll damage, but the outcome will be the same as your block of wall has one HP left. That's all I did. Just one point of damage. Oh, no! (laughs) Okay, and if I may ask of you a deck save, please. Oh, you may certainly. You have favored me ill. Die. I'm gonna go with this other one. Nineteen dex save. Beautiful. You will take half of... Well, I rolled a 1 on my d12, so you will take 1 damage or none? Or how does a half on 1 work? You can say it's 1. I gotta give you some damage. I gotta give you some yeah, damage, right? Yeah, it makes sense. Right. You uh, can't just not I get I think it's hurt. just 1. Yeah. 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 You're gonna take 1 bludgeoning damage as you lose that exact round of progress you just made and smash into the wall as you catch yourself with your dagger. Well, it's a bit more slippery than climbing a maple. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful. Everett, end in sight. Everett just hears the fucking sound of all this ice shattering all over the place. Beautiful. Cursed fucking place. Mm, That's a ten total. Damn it, you just stay in. I know. It was going so well. I know. (laughs) This is a game played with dice. But that's only going to be a nine attack roll. Cool. All right, great. You do no damage to the wall. You're floundering in place. Maybe you're getting tired. Who knows? But you didn't make any progress. Back to Jib. What am I, two successes away from the top now? Does a 16 do it? It does. All right. 13 hits for four bludgeoning damage. Okay. This layer of ice feels a lot thinner and less sturdy than the one before it as you wail into it and make a crack in it. I had suspected that. Wink. It's a 24 acrobatics. Beautiful. All of you... Whether you call out to each other or can look around, you all seem to be on the same level as you're making your way really close to the top at this point. And that's only a four for the attack roll. Definitely climbing this wall, respecting the surface of the mountain. Wink makes their way closer and closer. Everett, maybe you bring us home first. We are almost there. Oh, man, what is going on? A 14 just fails, I think. Don't tell me if that's true or not. I am going to add the knowledge of the past. That is a 17 total. That was a great choice. A 14 just failed. Congratulations. I thought so. Fuck. God. You put those very knowledgeable second life hands up on a ledge and hoist yourself up and you see yourself at the top of the climb. Congratulations, Everett. Is there anything you want to do real quick while you're here? Yeah, I'm gonna try and think of any way I can help. 
even though I don't have a rope. Go ahead and make me a perception check. Um, perception, that is a 16. Cool. On a 16, you don't have a rope. But now you do, because you find, clearly, the corpse of a former climber uh, oh, with a rope. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, that's been, that's been waiting for one of you the whole time. <laughs> mm. Holy shit. Because the winds are so awful right now, you can't simply climb someone up. The second they unlatch from the wall, that rope is going to flail wildly. But they can use it to sturdy themselves while they stay in this wall. Otherwise, the winds are going to batter them into this wall. You can choose one player to give the rope to for an advantage on that initial check. Cool, like the help action. Nice. Okay, and I can do that now. Now that I'm up here, I can do that. Yep. Great. You can just go to Jib, help Jib, and then the two of you can go to Wink. Right. You can just do that. I go down to Jib. Jib, I have found a rope. Oh, look at that. Grab on. And I unravel the rope down to Jib. I grab the rope. Okay, you now make your next check with advantage. Excellent. Well earned. Fifteen? <laughs> Jesus. Just does it. You are up on the top now. Fucking thank <laughs> Feels God. good to be on top, doesn't it? You can always trust rope. <laughs> <laughs> that will be on Jib's tombstone someday. <laughs> <laughs> if not that, I don't know what. <laughs> Expertly said. Oh, and uh, Everett, thank you. <laughs> okay, you both can go and offer the help to Wink as Wink make their last bit up this wall. I gesture for the rope expert in the party to aid. <laughs> Seeing as we've got a rope expert, that's a 20 acrobatics. Mm-hmm. The three of you at the top of the climb, finally. Fucking finally, Jesus. Yeah. You get to see Jib haul some rope. I pull Wink up over the ledge. And it feels like back home to you, Jib. There's something natural about just pulling something on rope. Just for and here we are. Little Van Halen plays in the background. <laughs> Perfect. Why? Because <laughs> he's Canadian! <laughs> Is Benton Hanlon Canadian? Yes! Oh, okay. I would have thought Rush. He's more of a Rush guy. Oh, no, that's a way better, that's a way better, that's a way better example. All right, you're at the top of this mountain. Anything you want to say to each other to celebrate? We made it. Is everyone all right? My knuckles are a bit bruised, but I'll get over it. Just hope it's a fair side easier going down. One can only hope. Where'd you get this rope? <laughs> I point back to the corpse silently. Oh. What happened to that poor soul? You can roll perception or investigation to rifle through the corpse and kind of see what happened to it and see if anything else is on it. I'll roll investigation. I want to see if something killed this body. It's a 16 investigation. I'll roll. I want to see if they have any loot. I got a awesome. 17 perception. I rolled nothing worth mentioning. Yeah. All right, cool. You notice... A large bite on the shoulder of this thing. And it also looks like its back its just been like cracked in as if some sort of blunt trauma to its backside. Its eyes still open and glazed over in ice, its mouth wide open. Unfortunately, you find nothing else on it. There was just that rope slung around its non-bitten shoulder. Mm. Well, that doesn't happen to us. Ever, you know what sort of predator might make these sorts of markings? Yeah, can I follow that up with a nature check? Yeah, you can. It's going to be really hard to tell because it's a bite. Lots of shit bites. Mm-hmm. I'm almost spoiling the outcome of your roll. Okay. I guess I'm also wondering what bites a thing but doesn't need its kill. <sighs> that wink is a wise question. I cannot tell what this is, I think. I only got a ten. Lots of things bite. Peculiar that it didn't kill its target, but... Didn't eat its target? Sorry. It definitely <laughs> killed its target. <laughs> Didn't need his target. His target's definitely dead. Everett turns to see what the fuck we're staring at now. Cool. All right. In front of you, you just see a pathway and then rolling hills of frost, maybe a couple of trees lightly peppering the landscape of this mountainside. Lots of jagged rock. There's a path before you. Whether from a past life, Everett, or Jib or Wink in your travels further south, this looks to be like any other trail you would see. Everything is covered in snow and ice. Otherwise, you don't get any foreboding nature from this trail. And you definitely can sense that without any sort of insight or anything, taking anything other than this trail would add difficulty to an already long trip. Very well. Step carefully. I'm not going to make you roll any survival checks for this because it's a pretty plain-ass path. I will say maybe 45 minutes into this walking, you do see a shape in front of you. The path widens out. And as you get closer... Maybe you stop and try to take it in. It's definitely alive without rolling, I'll tell you that much. But if you want to try and learn anything more about what's in front of you, this living shape, I invite you all to roll nature. There's some kind of animal up ahead. I would be wary of whatever we find up here. Do not get too close. That's an eight. I got a 15. 
Got a nine. Everett, on a 15, you recognize this creature. It's not common. You've heard of it before. And you recognize it because on its backside seem to be jagged rocks of some sort. You know this to be probably a basilisk that you see ahead. Roll history, if you could. Okay. I guess that's another 15. Cool. Yeah, on a 15, I'll say what you recall about a basilisk is that you've heard that it's just wise not to stare at them directly in the eye. You know that much about them. Yeah. For right now, it looks like it hasn't noticed you, but you do notice its wide mouth and big fangs, and you can tell this probably is what did the damage, but you know, you also feel a little grateful for it because it led you to the rope, so that was nice of it. Is it doing something? It's just sort of... Kind of just sitting there, right? In fact, it could even just be basking in the sunlight, almost like an alligator would down here in Florida. It's just kind of sitting there. Okay. Basking in the wintry winds. Yeah, it likes it up here. Mm. So, you are welcome to do whatever you want. Let me know what you do next. I believe this is a basilisk. Perhaps it is wise if we avoid it entirely. Are you thinking you want to try and sidestep around this thing and maybe use the snow to dampen your footfall and stealth away from this thing? I'm not opposed to trying to use some stealth here. Yeah, for sure. Cool. All right. I will give you... Give me an initial stealth check. Ooh. Well, I think I've already screwed it up. Seven. Dirty 20. Stealth. That is a 14. Pretty low roll. Better than a two. Yeah, that's true. Middling roll. Oh, man. Oh, man. Don't tell us. Just. It just failed. <laughs> oh, God. It just failed. As you get close, before anything else happens, you can now see that the rocks on the back of this basilisk are glowing red. Mm. And it's pretty easy to tell without any roll. This looks a lot like the rapacite you've been carrying. Mm. And this basilisk seems to be covered in it. Mm. As it turns around and notices the three of you, I'm going to have everyone go ahead and roll initiative. Spooky. Tonight's Wink Wuggins is brought to you by the number two. Oh, God. Total of six on initiative. Uh-huh. Uh, okay. Everett's looking at a 17. Me too. Mods for each of you? Four. Three. Awesome. Not a surprise round, because you knew it was there, so that's great. Everett, you would know this, because you recall what a basilisk is. Basilisks, if you look them in the eye, bad things happen, so you're welcome to attack it directly up close melee range and look at it and close your eyes, but right, right, you will right. have disadvantage on your attack rolls. So you can attack safely from 30 feet at a distance, or if you want to attack up close with your eyes closed, you can roll at a disadvantage. Okay. All right, Everett, you're up first. Stay back if you can. And Everett will stay back. Drawing his longbow, he's going to make an attack. That is a 19 total. Hits, 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 hits. Come Shiva, we have found more prey. And maximum damage, that is 12. Beautiful. As a bonus action, as I strike with my arrow, I would like to cast Hunter's Mark. And you see a dull shadow form around the wound of the arrow. Awesome. Excellent. Everett, that's you. Next up, Jib. All right, I'm gonna take out my light crossbow from my belt, and I'm gonna shoot at it. That's a 12 to hit. That misses, unfortunately. Yeah, it does. The bolt hitting its mark, but dinking off of one of those big chunks of Wraith aside on its backside. Aw, dink. The Basilisk is up next, and while it is annoyed at you for that pathetic display, it is going to charge after Everett's who I believe is 30 feet away. Unfortunately, this thing does not have 30 feet of movement, but it is 20 feet away from you at this point. So it would be best to shut your eyes. I do so. Probably helps to say who's next. It's Wink. I too will avert my eyes as I cast Tasha's hideous laughter on this thing. (laughs) Nice. Okay. What do you call a lizard that got made by a wizard and now has a chortle in its gizzard? And I strum a banjo and say my silly joke, and it can make me a wisdom save, please. Oh, God, it's a negative one mod. It's a 17 on the dice. Does a 16 pass? Yeah, it does. Damn. Oh, well, it happens. Damn. Uh, And, yeah, then I'll just avert my eyes. The Wraith Basilisk finding your joke utterly tasteless. I guess it probably wouldn't have worked anyway. I don't know what its intelligence is, but it needs an intelligence of four or higher to understand humor. (laughs) Negative four mod. Everett. What you got? All right, I'm going to back away. I'm going to use a full movement to get 30 feet away. It's 20 feet from you now, so you'd be 50 feet away. You still have range to hit it from 50 total? Oh, yeah. Longbow's got like 120 or something. Oh, yeah, your Um, longbow. Yeah, I'm going to use full movement, turn around, and fire. That is going to be a 15 to hit. 
Hits. Just hits. Cool. This is plus the hunter's mark. 13. Excellent. Looking hurt. This feels very like World of Warcraft dungeon farming as a hunter where he just fucking kiting, man. And just hitting <laughs> kiting. <laughs> kiting. This is kiting all day. You fucking you get your true shot in, you kite backwards, you auto attack. What else do you need? Alright, Everett, that's Everett's turn. Jib. Alright, I'm gonna use that same technique. I'm gonna use my movement to back at least thirty feet away from this thing. I'm shooting it with a light crossbow. And that's going to miss as well on a 10. It does indeed. All right, Basilisk up next. Realizing what Everett is doing, its intelligence not high, but it's high enough to realize this is a losing battle. It's going to head for Wink, and it can reach you in its movement, Wink, yep. and it is going to make two attacks at you. Okay. It is going to make its bite. I believe I have rolled a natural 20. Okay, good for you, buddy. Wink go. No, it's all good. <laughs> oh, yeah. Where is Wink in relation to us? 10 feet ahead of you if you've been... Yeah. Ah, oh, okay, gotcha. And that is going to be nine piercing damage. Okay. And then it is going to make its second attack with its tail, and that is only going to be a 13 to hit. That'll miss. Beautiful. Bites and hits you true, and I think maybe because its fangs are still latched into you, tries to go for the tail swipe, but just kind of flops around and doesn't really hit you. That is its turn. It is now your turn, Link. All right. Its eyes are very close and looming. I don't take too kindly to that. All right. I think I may be forced to use another spell here. Why don't y'all get the hells away from me? And (laughs) I will wrench my hand from out its jaw, strum my banjo, and, like, slap the drum. And from that, a thunder wave will emanate if it could make me a con save, I believe. Nice. Beautiful. I love that you're avoiding spell attacks specifically. 13 plus 2 is 15. Stop saving against my spells, you piece of shit. Stop Sorry. it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, Low level casters. Really? Takes 5 thunder damage. Cool. It's looking It's looking beat up. Not a death door or anything, though. It lives on ever. Okay. I see Wink in a bind. I shout out to this creature. Me. Me. I am the one you want. And I am going to fire. And that is a nat 20 from the old blue dice. Can't wait to go to New York again and bury those fucking dice. (laughs) (laughs) Just yeet them over the fence. Seriously. Oh my god. Throw them in the fucking Hudson River. (laughs) One of us has to do it before we get back to Theros. Seriously? It just needs to be done. Yes. I have to lock them in a box somewhere. Like... Yeah. Sick of those fucking blue dice. But we should do a one shot where the stakes are Andy will get rid of those dice if we manage to destroy the artifact. Yeah, yes. just to fucking purify purify my dice collection, rid them of the blue dice. These aren't great rolls. That is fifteen piercing in. Awesome. This thing is looking quite weak. It's looking beat up. Okay, that is my turn. Let's see what Jib does with that information. I'm gonna try it again. I'm going to try to shoot it again. I'm going to back away from it, and I'm going to shoot it with my eyes open. I will say at some point you might, like, run into a hill that is so stop backing up. You're good. You're safe. You're far away. Oh, it's not advancing. No, it stopped and bit me. Yeah, no, it's, it's beating the shit out of Wink. <laughs> Okay. You could attack it, and maybe you should, but your friend is getting hurt. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to shoot it with my crossbow. That's also going to miss. That's the same roll as last turn. Damn it. I'm going to action surge. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm going to try it again. I forgot I have bardic inspiration. Probably should have uh-huh. those out. Now you know what it's like. Thank you. Yeah, it's a struggle. Sticky notes. That's why I have... <laughs> it's easy to forget. That's why I have sticky notes. Well, this is an 18 to hit. 18 nice. to hit hits? 18 to hit. 18 to hit hits. Oh. And an 8 on the D8, plus 3. That's 11 piercing damage. Wow. That's definitely more health than it had. Jim, please tell us a tale of how the Wraith Basilisk came to fall in Icewind Dale. All right. So Jib, after missing three times in a row, fourth time's the charm for Jib, loads his crossbow one more time and shoots this Wraith Basilisk, hits it directly in one of its glowing eyes, and the bolt embeds itself into its head, and it falls over. It did. Beautiful. Woo, nice shot. Indeed. I'll hand you with that. Wow. Awesome. Is there anything you'd like to do? Otherwise, you are sitting, you assume you're at the crest of the mountain. There's you and there's Wraith Basilisk Corpse and the path onward. 
Yeah, um, what's the deal with, with this, <laughs> the, these fucking stones growing out of this thing? Is it just me, or do these look familiar? Uh, it ain't just you. I wonder if we can take some samples? This don't seem natural to me. We can try. Yeah, so you can try. It'll be a strength check to see if you can wedge these things from the backside of this basilisk. I will give someone stronger than me the help action. Who do you all reckon is the strongest one here? Oh, please, please milk this dialogue for all it's worth. I mean, I'm not even gonna pretend it's me. You two wanna arm wrestle? I feel no need to make this a contest. Come on, we could have made that work mechanically. <laughs> Killjoy. There are arm wrestling mechanics. I am perfectly secure in my abilities. Jib, why don't you go in? Seriously, though, what is your mod? Plus three. Yeah, you're stronger than Jib. <laughs> really? Yeah, Jib's, Jib's a, dex a dex fighter. fighter. Oh, he's a dex fighter. That's right. Jib's lanky. He's live. That's right. That's right. That's right. And Everett is old undead man strong. That's right. <laughs> Instead of saying, Jib, go ahead, uh, he will say, allow me. And here I go. That is 16. Cool. Yeah. On a 16, you are able to wedge one of the larger chunks from its back, but it takes a lot out of you, so you find it best to just take this one as proof that there is a living creature with this shit on its backside and be about your way. You think it would take quite a while and exhaust you a lot to peel every piece of ray to sight from this thing's back. Got it. I convey that. From my previous check before the combat, would I be able to tell if maybe the eyes or the teeth or some other easier harvested part of this could be useful whether it's rathocyte or not can you describe what you mean by useful and then i'll like uh you know like uh maybe there's you know uh poison in the fang or the eyes could have some sort of component thing i could fuck around with generally basilisk's blood can be used to reverse petrification but this is a weird basilisk so maybe not blood you know yeah yeah. Would I know anything about the basilisk? You can roll nature or history to find out what you know inherently about basilisk as you recover from this bite. It's a 15 history. You withstood a basilisk bite, and most people that can live tell of a basilisk bite were, you know, were afflicted with some sort of poison in the past. But you seem to be fine. You don't feel ill. You don't seem to be getting weakened in any way. You just seem to be in pain from the bite itself, but otherwise fine. Hmm. Well, that's strange. Usually these things is, uh, venomous. If it bites you and you die, it's venomous. If you bite it and you die, it's poisonous. Yeah, venomous. Usually these things is venomous, but I don't feel unwell or anything like that. How strange. It's... Mm. Maybe it's some effect of this crystal. Now, when you took it out, did it look like it was growing in there naturally, or like somebody had put it there, like it had been implanted or some such? That is a good question. On your strength roll 15, you kind of ripped this thing out haphazardly. and You didn't get a clean break. You know, you didn't get it where it meets the body, basically. So it's pretty hard to say if this is like some sort of freak of nature thing going on because it's in this area or because it's been experimented on. You, you definitely can't say. It seems so clear. Can I try and roll insight or something? You can roll insight, yeah. That's a 12. On a 12, generally, this thing's pretty high up this mountain on its own. It'd be weird for it to have been part of an experiment and then just let loose on a mountain. If you had to guess, and it all it would be is a guess, this thing probably formed this way as a result of living near a hotbed of rate site mining activity. It's your best guess. It is hard to say, but perhaps we are near some sort of source. Or Well, I reckon that mining town's right down the hill. Indeed. We shall press on. Okay, then. Awesome. Are you injured? Do you acquire a rest? Venomous or not? That was a strong bite. Without any rolls, you don't feel the presence of anything nearby, and you would guess that this is probably a safer place as any to take a beat. I suppose if we expect to run into more dangers on the way down, it might not hurt for me to take a moment. Jib looked like he took a tumble on the way up as well. Probably wouldn't hurt him either. Very well. All right. Awesome. Not only will you get a short rest, you will all level up to three. Woohoo! Da 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 Great. Cool. Y'all know what you're doing with that level? I'm assuming yes. Yes. Cool. Okay. Edgy. It's edgier. 
As we're doing this, I will sing a song of rest, continuing this tale of our adventures. Better watch out, you bloody sword killer. Your blood's gonna be the next that'll spill you. You reap what grows from the soil that you till her and you get what's coming to you. Boom, boom, boom. Not very much I know about solving mysteries in the freezing cold. <laughs> I have to figure oh something God. else that comes after that, but we'll get there. Oh, Fucking extraordinary. Yeah, that's clapping on the downbeat music. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> See, I want to give you advantage for every role you do for the rest of the campaign. You keep coming up with shit like that. <laughs> I'm not gonna, but I want to. Beneath his hood and mask, Everett tries very hard to hold back a smirk. Beautiful. Jib's stomping along. <laughs> Jib's loving this. That is only four hit points back for me, but so be it. I think a good 18 should probably be enough to get into town. I'm at full. Nice. I am still at full. All right, cool. You start to make your way down. It's pretty uneventful. You hit the edge of the crest of the mountain, so where it begins to really start to make its pace downward. You can definitely see Tourmaline from a distance. From here, it's a town. You can't make out anything more than buildings situated against a river. You can make out kind of a large forest on its northern side. You continue down the mountain. I'm not going to have you make any checks. But at some point, the road will dip and then flatten out, and then there will be a left and a right path for you to consider taking. Left or right? Classic conundrum. Classic conundrum. Had this been in Ravnica, you feel like there may be two ogres with a riddle for you, but here there are none. <laughs> it was one Etten. Okay. Yeah, that's right, it was one headed. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> Two headed ogres. Two headed ogres. That's right, that's right. Sorry, you said there was a forest on the. The north side of Tourmaline. Way in the distance, you see oh, a forest oh, okay. on okay. the northern Got side it. of Tourmaline. Got it. Okay. Is there anything to suggest that these two ways might be different in some way? Roll perception. All right. 13. Eight. Or nature, if it's better. I welcome. It's not. Okay. <laughs> I got a 17. Okay. Cool. On those rolls, you can hear faintly in the distance coming from the left path some sort of running water, but it's faint. And on the right, you don't really hear much of anything. Well, there could be a stream or river that way. Otherwise, I do not think it matters. I'm partial to water, so... I'm partial to going left. Very well. All right, cool. You head on the left path. The path continues to dip down and then flattens out once again, and you do, in fact, see this running water. It's part of a stream, and basically there is this cliff area where the path turns into a bridge to separate a long drop down where this stream of water turns into like a... I don't want to call it a waterfall because it's a very small amount of water, but it is a drop, and you would see that it's probably too large to just jump, but the bridge is broken ahead. Strange path into town seems does appear to have fallen into disrepair yes these were the words i was looking for thank you how far down is the water from this bridge go ahead and make me perception or nature again for just this whole area it's another 13 it's a 10 17 beautiful we'll start with the 10 on a 10 you can just definitely tell the drop is long you're not dropping down and not getting significantly hurt it's probably a good 60 feet no way to catch yourself you would take a tumble if you decided to try and jump down and see where you could go from there so best you can tell the way forward is this bridge on the 13 and the 17 the two of you don't stay so fixated on what's beneath and you start to look around you notice above you another not well-groomed path, but you do see above you the rotted tree. There are no leaves on it. This thing is bare. It's the middle of winter. But you see a couple of trees up above one perched really precariously and kind of starting to rot out up above. And you could definitely tell it wouldn't take too much to just go up there near that tree if you wanted to go and check that out. Something about it piques your interest. There is something odd about that tree. What now? I was just thinking it's a long way down. True to the roll, Wink. I appreciate that. Stay here, if you would, my companions. Okay. And I would like to stealth towards this scene and see if I can get a better look. Yeah, you can roll stealth. A 19. Yeah, the tree doesn't notice you on a 19. And if there's anything else, it doesn't either. I thought so. Cool. You make your way up to the tree. When you get to the tree, make me an investigation check. 50. Cool. On a 15, you can tell that this thing is rotted up quite a bit. You could easily push this thing. You can look at this tree, Mm. and you can kind of line it up with your companions down below, 
And you think if you gave this thing a good shove, it would fall down and you could use it as a bridge. It's a fucking... What do they call those? Act quick time <laughs> Q... Quick time T-E-E's. events? Quick time events yeah. are terrible. <laughs> no, this is a direct homage or call out to a very underappreciated PlayStation 1 game called Legend of Dragoon. It's like the first thing you do, you're in a forest and you push a tree down to make a bridge. Mm. Had to pay respects. Okay, I'm going to do it. You can give me a strength check, or you can call to your friends and they can give you a help action, or you can just try and just brunt this thing. You are about to shove a whole ass tree. <laughs> Does Everett seem like the type of person who would call for help? No, Everett seems like the type of person that's going to shove a tree. I might need to. I only got a nine. You'll break your stealth. The tree will notice you if you do this. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What are you doing over there? On a nine, you fail. By the way. This could provide a path across if you will lend me some aid. If you wanted our aid, why'd you ask us to wait here? <laughs> Wink winks at Jim. <sighs> I'll be right over, buddy. I go over and start pushing on the tree, too. Beautiful. Everett, give it another <laughs> shot. Help action here. Advantage. That's a 19 on the dice this time cool. for a 22. Beautiful. On a 22, you forcefully but gracefully shove this tree out from where it is rooted. It falls, not in a way that's going to shatter it into pieces, but it slumps onto the side of this cliff and slides its way down right at the edge of where this bridge starts, and you think you could go down and walk across. Okay. All right. Good thinking, Everett. I nod silently. Cool. Because this tree is rotted out, I'm going to have you make an acrobatics check to see how lightly you can keep your footfalls without crunching this thing into pieces Mm, as you try to delicately walk across. All right. Here goes. 12? 10. Oh, boy. Everett, I'm going to have you go ahead. I got the one integer between those two numbers in 11. <laughs> All right. This is kind of be weird. Here we go. Maybe this isn't cool. Let's do a group deck save. Damn it. Why did we do this? <laughs> we could have gone the other way. I want to give you your average group <laughs> deck save. Let's see what you all average out in a deck save here. God damn it. We literally, there was a whole nother path. <laughs> you all hold hands as your fate is decided together. Deck save everybody. Fuck! 19. <laughs> 23. <sighs> 7. Awesome. Well done. Everett's distracted by the thought of becoming acquainted with people. Yeah, Everett, <laughs> Everett not paying attention because Jib just held his hand. Disgusting. It's kind of slimy. No, get away from me. Ugh. Hand in hand, clasping... This thing, you hear groaning and creaking, and you know. You just know what's about to happen. It shatters beneath you. You all jump together over to the other side of this. Splinters hitting you and you smashing into the ground, taking only half of this because you do save. Half of seven, total of three. Let's call it bludgeoning damage, okay. each of you. But we did make it to the other side? In you're this on the other side. Oh, you're, you're totally good. Okay. He made it. He made it. You're there. You're done. You now notice that you're going down this hill. You brush yourself off. The path continues down pretty uneventful. You notice as you're going down, the trees are less bare. The last remnants of pine needles clinging to them because this place is not quite as frigid, cold, and exposed to the sky. Go ahead and let's do one group survival check as we start to hit into a little bit of a more forested area coming to the bottom of the mountain. 21. 14. Survival, 17. Awesome. Great. A couple of sounds out in the distance, but on that roll, you are able to steer clear of it and keep yourself safe and out of contact with anything here. Let's go ahead and follow that up with a nature check. 17. 16. 15. Yahtzee. Beautiful. <laughs> Is that how Yahtzee works? No, I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> awesome. On that high roll, you come across a clearing that you feel you've been to already, which is weird. You're heading downhill. Mm. Mm. But you seem to still somehow be going in circles. And remind me, because I forgot already, could we see the town in the distance when we were coming down the mountain? When you were at the top? But once you started going down and like trees were there, it was harder to see. Then we sort of lose sight of it. I see. You see lose sight of it, yeah. But the the path has been one way, which is why it's a little weird that you seem to be going in circles. Got it. What time of day is it at this point, do you think? It is not super late in the day. Like, even after that short rest and your encounter, 2 p.m., if that, even earlier, honestly. Okay, I'm just wondering what the time frame is between how long we're wandering through the woods, between when we 
come to mm-hmm. the place we think we've seen before and when we come to it again, right? Mm-hmm. Like, we got here at 2. When was the last time we thought we saw this clearing? Oh, oh, the clearing itself. That's probably been, like... Okay. It's hard to say for sure. You're going in one direction. Everything feels like progress. This is the first time where you've had to sit and think, wait a minute, this looks familiar. How long have we been doing this? Okay. Even in your bewildered state, you can tell, like, okay, if we lost progress, this wasn't a lot of progress. So, that being said, what would you like to do? This path seems familiar. Something is not right. I was thinking the same exact thing. Any idea what could cause this? Would I, like a history or arcana or something... Roll be able to identify potential sources of this strange... You could do either. Okay. That one, but... Lucky Halfling tries again for a seven. No idea. Anyone else want to roll? I have a 15 Arcana. On a 15, Everett, maybe it's something from your past life, if there was knowledge of what went on in the woods up this far north, but you've heard tale of lots of people losing their lives to the forest, and that's probably because of the horrible weather conditions, and since snow has a way of making everything look the same, you may recall some detail about weird supernatural things, but whether that's because of cultism or general superstitions around... This oral figure that you maybe heard of a few times before, you can't say for sure. Mm, Okay. On that roll, you don't feel confident. You know that's all just you being superstitious. Everett takes his head in his hand again. (sighs) Yes, there is something dark at work, but uh, I cannot remember. There is strange force. Familiar, but mm, I am sorry. I do not know exactly. Well, I expect the only way out is through, then. Indeed. Cool. Everybody can go ahead and make me one more, or more, nature check. Fourteen. Seven. Dirty. Twenty. Very nice. On that group nature roll, you make your way around. Another probably 15, 20 minutes goes by. You come across the same clearing. And as you step into it, you start to hear small, faint voices. Real quick note, Jimmy Scala. VFX for these. What kind of VFX? You'll probably figure it out on your own pretty quickly. Okay. So I'll have any of you make me a perception check as you start to hear these voices. Nope. Nat 20. Everett got a nat 1 as he's sort of mumbling to himself. Oral. Frost. Maiden. I cannot remember. 22 total. And what did you get, Everett? That is a 1. Oh, one. Okay. <laughs> Your finger is out of frame. Sorry. <laughs> the single finger indicating a natural. Yeah. Everett looking up in the sky for Oral, not even remotely in the right direction. Wink, however, you notice these little tiny, faint, almost wooded, but green fingers and hands kind of climbing oh, over these trees. I'd be surprised if you knew what the fuck this was, Andy. What do you think this is? <laughs> Are these those little woodwoed guys? Woodwood guy? They're called Twingas. Wait, is that actually what they are? <laughs> oh my god! Twingas. Twingas. <laughs> like, one of the things that I remember from the bestiary of that book. Nice! Yeah, C-H-W-I-N-G-A. Twingas. They're Ewoks! Are they? Twingas. They're cooler than Ewoks. They're less teddy bear. You see these hands start to peer out and... Describe them for us. Well, only Wink is seeing their hands right now. Wink, because you already see their hands, you can hear one of them say to the other, It's okay now. It's okay. Should we come out? Well, you ain't hidden anymore. It's y'all that's been leading us astray. Uh, I'd like to know why. Or if you're lost too, maybe we can help each other become unlost together. Oh no! They found us! They found us! That's okay. Let's just go out. You will see at first two of these small creatures come out. You see probably three and a half foot in height. These skinny little dudes coming out. They've got masks that cover their face. You don't see any eye holes or mouth holes. It looks almost like a hockey mask, but with a different painting structure around it. They're covered in straw, almost what looks like corn husks all around them. They're carrying spears and sticks. Some of them are more blue, some of them more green can't really make out what their faces look like because, again, it's covered by this mask, but they're all scurrying about excitedly, nervously as they look at you. They're tilting their head, and the one will be like, It's okay. Let's let's just go. Let's just go up to them. Let's just go up to all of them. And they're going to start to slowly make their way towards you. You ain't got nothing to fear from us. I am loving this. Everett, sort of skeptical. Who are you? 
I'm Meepo. My name's Meepo. I'm Braymock. Nice to meet ya. I'm Mappo. And I'm Mappo. Meepo, Mappo, and Muppo. And then all of them just start... There are like 12 of them, and they just start saying all of their names, and you can't even begin to keep track of all of them. This is Fraggle Rock. <laughs> oh, I would very much <laughs> like to keep track of them, Jeppy. We've got Meepo, Mappo, Muppo. Bremock was the other one that you can tell I haven't. Braynock? What was the other one I said? I don't remember. You're the one who's introducing these characters. That's Braymock. Great. Let's say I said Braymock. Meepo, Mappo, Muppo, Braymock, Charn, Trucko, Trucko, Lilu, Tim, Tim, Tet. <laughs> Tim Tet. No, it's Tim Tet. Tim, <laughs> Tim Tet. Yes. Yes. More. Tim Tet. Um, Ruffle. Uh, Russell. No, Ruffle. 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 Okay. Ruffle and Stutley. <laughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, oh nine, ten. Yeah, I need one more. Um, Jorith. Okay, great. Okay. Cool. Can't wait to keep track of all these. Glad I said 12. This has to all stay in. This is all in. Oh, oh it, it will. will. It, should. it, it absolutely, absolutely will. will. <laughs> Scala will not he let says. me abandon this dedication and this commitment that I've made. Uh, Jimmy, I need you to VFX the shit out of these so they're in, incomprehensible from one another because there's no way I'm going to be right. able to differentiate. They're all individual. Oh, beautiful. All right, I turn to Tim Tet. And I say, <laughs> great. <laughs> Tim Tet seems the most shy. Maybe because the name is close to timid. Tim Tet is hiding behind Huffle, but peers over at you. <laughs> oh my god. Hello. Yeah, what? <laughs> nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you. I'm Tim Tet. Do you live here? Yeah, we all live here. All right. And do you ever get lost wandering around here? Hard to be lost when you're home. Jorith says. I imagine that's so. But if these woods are your home, so to speak, you ever try getting from one end to the other and find yourself going in circles? Because that's what I'm afraid has been happening with myself and my friends here. Oh, about that, Braymock says. That may have been our fault. I'm real sorry. We get bored here. Trucko comes in. Braymock, you shouldn't have said it. They're not going to like us now. And Ruffle steps in and says, Sorry about my friends. They talk too much. Anyway, yeah, we get bored here real often, and it's good to have visitors. So we brought you back here a couple times. We just, we wanted to say hi. Oh, hi. I understand how it can be. We didn't get too many visitors back in Red Rock, and usually when we did, it, it weren't for nothing good. I'll say that much. I, I understand wanting to get to know strange folk to come through, but, you know, that's not the most hospitable thing to do. Yeah. Somebody comes into your home and you confuse them like. Muppo says, Red Rock? What's Red Rock? Red Rock sounds cool. Tell us all about Red Rock. I want to hear about this Red Rock thing. Stutley cuts him off and says, Whoa, 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 Muppo, Muppo. Stop it. We didn't do the thing yet. And then they're all going to start dancing in a circle around you. What the fuck? Everett gets really nervous. <laughs> And then they all just sit down and put their hands on their chin and just say, Tell us stories. I will invite you all to make a history or arcana check. What is happening? (laughs) Nat 20. Uh, 23. (laughs) Beautiful. History. No one else needs a roll. I mean, you feel free, but... Okay. No, I only got a 15. Wink, maybe it's because you're just trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. But you are able to reach back in your memory... And recall stories about these weird little creatures of the forests. You didn't know they were in Icewind Dale. Maybe that's why you didn't think of it at first. But you remember hearing about these creatures that are just fascinated with the life of different types of humanoids. And whenever they encounter them, they always try to just listen and learn from their stories. You also know that the better the story, the more interesting they are. And they find these stories, the more you may be rewarded for them love this. So we will go around and each of you will tell interesting facts about yourself and where you're from to these Chwingas. And if they like it, they will applaud. You will get a point. If they don't like your story, they will not applaud. And you don't get a point. We will see how many points you have as a group. And then based on the number of points, they will offer a charm to your party to be used at any time. Oh man, this is cool. This is really cool. Everett is deeply uncomfortable. <laughs> I think Everett's going to have a hard time telling cool. So, oh God, Everett doesn't even know their past life. <laughs> you are forcing me to potentially reveal things. I do not like this. I mean, you don't have to. Mm-hmm. Real quick, like, you are also welcome to make shit up. They will roll against it, and I will offer you to roll deception. Like, you can do that. If you make up something so entertaining, they may not even 
notice. So have fun with this. There's no initiative. I'm certainly not rolling 12 little shits into initiative. They're just going to listen. You all can go in whatever order you want. Petwingas sit in a circle around you, all 12 of them, patiently waiting for something cool to be talked about. I look to Wink. You have stories, right? Oh, all right. Guess I'll go first. And not too much has happened to me, but I have a few interesting tales to tell. Take out my banjo. I make sure it's in tune for this. What's that thing? What's that thing? Whoa, wow! <laughs> uh, which one said that? Hold on, hold on. That was Stutley. Oh, Stutley. I'm not meaning to tell you about nothing, but may not look like it. I've had some days as an outlaw, you see. We'll put an actual cord in there. <laughs> Down in Red Rock, we are part of the Countess Hastings' revenue. And what that means is what's ours belongs to her. But that revenue comes under the precondition that we are protected and we are given the means by which we can sustain ourselves. Now, the old Countess Hastings had died and her daughter assumed her seat. And she thought... You know, what's yours is mine meant that she was owed and entitled to a little more than we was given her. Folk around town didn't like that very much. And in fact, we was trying to come up with what might be done about such a imposition. Now, the Countess Hastings, she's got folk at arms and armored knights and all manner of might that might be brought to bear against rebels. But if you know... How to hide in the woods. As I imagine you might do. Yeah, we do. We do do that. We do that. I do that. You do that. I know that you can get around such kinds of brute force. And so we put ourselves together a little posse outlaws. And we decided that we was going to take back what rightfully belonged to us. They start exclaiming, Wow, whoa, whoa. They move on and look to Jib. And they say, what about you? Does yours have the music stuff too? Should I roll anything for that? I don't want to make you like roll performance because I feel like that roll undoes the creativity of what you're trying to say. Really? I didn't build this bar to not roll performance. Fine. <laughs> How about this? I will let you roll performance to determine if you get a second point. Okay, I'll take that. I got a 17. Great. You get two points for that storytelling. But, Jib, they're looking at you. You don't have a banjo. You better impress. Oh, all right. <laughs> says with this flat Minnesota accent. It's not Minnesota. I know. It's all I know. There's no Minnesota in this world. We did reference Canada. It's from down south in the north. It's from down south in the north. That's right. I think Jim actually has a hometown, and I'm forgetting what it's called. I'm about to talk about it. And in Forgotten <laughs> Realms location. Well, I come from a place called Noralu. It's a seaside town in the north. Noralu sounds like a Twingo word. I like that place. We should go check it out sometime. Yeah. Let's do that. Oh, wait. We gotta stop talking. It's a seaside town in the north. Well, it's south of here, but we call it the north. Anyway, I work at the harbor, like my father before me, and we'd meet sailors from all over the world traveling through on their way up and down the coast, and they would tell all kinds of stories about what they would see out at sea. Being a sea elf, you know, we live in the shallows. We come up to the harbor to do our work and then go back into the sea at the end of the day where our dwellings are, but we mostly stick to the shallows. You know, a little further out, you have the mer people, and then further past that are the Sahagin, and then way, way out past the shipping lanes, there's some other things. What's that? What does other things even mean? Trucko says. Jib kind of, well, it's like the middle of the day, right? Yeah, definitely. Okay, never mind then. Sailors tell stories of strange things. Wait, were you about to do a lighter underneath? Yeah, I was going to do some kind of like lighting my face from the bottom. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, and the trees are kind of bare. Like, the canopy allows it, but it doesn't. Damn it. Okay. No, it's all right. It's all right. Wait, wait. No, no, no. Can I cast dancing lights and make some creepy lighting for, for Jim? Yes, yes, definitely. Yes. This will give you advantage on your performance roll for the extra bonus point later. I'm here for it. Let's do it. Great. Yeah, so now Jib's face is kind of lit from below, kind of spooky looking. Oh my god. They're leaning in. The sailors tell stories of seeing strange things way out there. They see ghost ships that appear on only the foggiest nights. They see massive shadows beneath the water. They see creatures that can't be explained by anything or anybody. And it's said that in the deepest depths, there are massive ancient creatures 
some say older than the land itself. Bah! Charn says, scaring all the other Twingas. <laughs> got you! Alright, that's what I got. Go ahead and follow it all up with a performance check. They were spooked by Charn's little thing, which helped you get your one point. Let's go ahead and roll with advantage, thanks to Dancing Lights, a performance check to see if you can get another point of impressing them. Excellent. Alright, yeah, that is an 18. Awesome. This party now has four points of Twinga being impressed points call them <laughs> they shake off the scaries and look over to you everett hoping for something real cool i can tell you like these haunted tales of far off land and sea i assure you the story that i tell is no fairy tale imagine tiny beings waking up cold alone a hole in your throat noose around your neck blood on the snow all around you. This, this is the first thing that the ghost remembers. Are you the ghost? No, that can't be the ghost. That doesn't make any sense. No, I think he's the ghost. He's gotta be the ghost. Look at the way he's telling the story. I don't know. Hey, shut up, Trucko. They wander, and when they are tired, they continue to wander. And when they can no longer bear to stand, somehow their cold, unbeaten hearts Are you saying you got no heart? They find a caravan. This is the first sign of any life the ghost has seen since they have woken up. The first souls they can remember seeing. They join them for a time. They travel the Black Road. Because for some reason, since they have awoken, they have had a feeling, the only feeling, that this, this will take them to where they must go. And Everett leans back into his hood and lets the shadows of his cloak and garb cover his body. Lilu points to Jib and says, His story was scary, but this one story was just sad. It made me sad. I don't like sad. Jorth will say, Yeah, sad sucks. And Stutley will say, Hey, some stories make you sad. That's totally okay. Normal for stories to make you sad. Ruffle and Huffle will be like, Yeah, every story's got a different feeling. It's good to have different feelings. Then the whole group of 12 just gets into this debate about whether some stories should be sad or not. Eventually coming to an agreement that, Yeah, some stories are sad. So you do get the point. Cool. But because they're not unanimously in agreement, I'll have you roll your performance check flat. Fine by me. No longer riding off the high of those dancing lights. <laughs> I did get a 19. Oh, wow. Nice. We've got nothing but 19s. <laughs> Hold on. Sweet. Let me check a modifier here. Yep. That's a donut for a 19. Cool. That's a donut. Awesome. For the second round, they're actually just going to look to each of you and ask you a specific question. Mm. They're going to start with you, Wink. Why do you think you all banded together? What is it makes people want to do something like that? Well, sometimes the answer is simple. But I feel like I'm letting you down by just saying necessity. If we let the Countess Hastings take what we needed to survive, then we'd have to figure out a way to do without. That would have been quite difficult. But I think, in most cases, what pushes folk over the edge, what makes them fight for one another, isn't just necessity. I think, to put it in a word, it's love. You love the people around you, and you hate to see them suffer. And for that, you would hazard any risk. Or take up any fight, even if it's one you can't win. You see Braymok ugly crying and Meepo, Mapo, and Muppo just consoling Braymok. Clearly, those words of togetherness and reason for being have struck a chord with this adorable little group of Twingas, and you get your point. You can go ahead and also roll a performance. I only rolled a two. That's going to be a ten. Worst thing for a halfling to roll. Cool. One point only. Total of seven for the group. Braymok will get it together, and then they'll look back and say to Jib, You know, you said that unmentionable things in the waters there, but why do people keep details out of the stories? I mean, I imagine you want to tell as many details as you could with these stories. Yeah, that's fishy to me. You probably know a thing or two about fish. Why do they do that? Yeah. Why do they leave things out of the story? Well, it depends on whose version of the story you're listening to, I guess. I think that everyone tells the stories a little differently, and some say that the things that live in the depths have a lot that they don't want you to know, and what they allow you to know, (sighs) some say it has a million arms and a million legs, some say it has a million eyes. One thing's for sure, everyone who's seen it describes it differently. Fuck. 
Ruffle and Huffle will look to each other, scratching their heads quizzically. That doesn't make sense to me. No, it doesn't make sense to me either. Leaving the details out. Details are different. I don't know. Feels weird. Feels fishy. They're confused as to why stories get manipulated over time. To them, that's the worst thing ever. All they live for is stories of the people. You do not get a point for this round. Sorry, Jib. I don't like that. You have set them. We see how this goes. Turn it around, Everett. They're going to look at you. Now they're leery, right? Now they're a little suspicious because they don't like the thought Damn it. that stories can get distorted and manipulated over time. And they're going to look to you and they're going to ask you very plainly. When you told that last story, why didn't you just say it was you? Everett will ponder this question a moment. Lean forward plainly. Sometimes when a story is sad, as you have so accurately described, It can be painful in a sad way to share this experience firsthand. And as so, it would befit a tale. Whether it be a sad tragedy, a ghost story of a horrific sea monster, or the heroics of a small town band of righteous To separate oneself as storyteller, is that not what you love so much? Tim Tat will say, We love the stories, yeah. Jorth will nod in agreement. Stutley will look at you and say, So you just don't want to feel pain, huh? And then Ruffle and Huffle will say, We don't like pain. In unison. And the rest of them will start to nod in agreement. And they'll understand why you deflected. And you can get a point and go ahead and roll performance. That's a four. Cool. One point it is. <laughs> Beautiful. Awesome. Great. So they, at the same time, they get up and they do their little dance again. And then they'll just start saying, thanks so much for the stories. The three of you, you're, you're good people. We like you. We like you a lot. <laughs> yeah. We'll make it so you don't get lost anymore. We promise. But here, have this. And they extend all of their arms out at the same time. And you just see some... Faint glowing, what'll happen next? You will be granted a charm of your choosing. So I just sent you all a list of the possible charms they will give you. So go ahead and take a look at that. All right, looks like you're going with the charm of the traveler's haven. They hand you the charm of your choosing. Three charges. Spending one on an action, you cast Leomun's tiny hut spell. It allows you to craft a tiny hut to provide you a safe resting place in the wild. Well, Meepo and Mopo and Muppo and Trucko and Ruffle and Huffle and Stutley and Jorth and Draynock and Lilu and Charn and Timtet, it has been my absolute pleasure to get to know all y'all. There's more to that story, if I'm ever in the area again, if you'd care to hear it. In the area. <laughs> Thanks so much for having us in your home. They jump up and down and start cheering and clapping and circling around you. And What a hero. They're going to clap their hands. You'll notice a shift in the pathway, and they will be scurrying back into the woods. Awesome. You look behind you and see the path that you were on before. All right. We go. Didn't know if you wanted to say anything (laughs) after what is objectively a weird experience. I didn't know if you were going to cut the episode there. (laughs) No, no, I'm not. Let's follow that trail. Yeah, we're Cool. All right, great. You go down this trail, 20 minutes go by, nervously awaiting what happens, and yeah, you're not in circles anymore. You're making headway here. And it isn't maybe another hour or two before the forest starts to dissipate. The trail makes its way out towards an open field. And at the far end of this field, you see the gates of Tourmaline before you. And that's where we'll end our session today. That was good shit. of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our Holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a Holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.